Hey, look what I was sent. It's a package from BenQ. I have a BenQ little speaker there that I use all the time. I did a review on it, and I've also used BenQ monitors over the years. This time, however, they reached out and asked me if I wanted to review one of their docs. This is the DP1310 B Creatus dock. It's a pretty high-end professional style dock. Audio port, USB-C, 10 gigabit, supplies 36 watts. It's actually a decent amount of watts there. You could do like a tablet, you could do uh, some laptops, like this laptop, for example, can take 65 full, but you'll be able to charge it off of that, no problem. Uh, be able to charge smaller devices like tablets, no problem as well. About a thousand megabytes a second, so pretty much as fast as a lot of these kind of, you know, NVMe enclosures can do anyways. And then on the back side, two USB-A. They're slow, they say they have a mouse and a keyboard. They're slow, so they're gonna be used for, you know, like dongles and that that come with mice, right? That kind of dongle, not for data purposes. Ethernet, which I, have, and it's gigabit ethernet apparently, so we can test that, I have that. Another USB-A, similar to those over there. Display port out, just plug in my, plug in my monitor if I feel like it. HDMI out, uh, HDMI in from my laptop, for example. Another HDMI, oh, that HDMI out does really fast. So that's an HDMI 2.1, 4K120, 8K60, that's really good. Because a lot of times these HDMIs do, realistically, you might get HDMI 2.0, and you're going to be 4K60 type thing. This is 4K 120. That's good. Uh, and a lot of times you have to resort to DisplayPort to get that kind of speed. This monitor here it does 144 hertz, uh, and it does support DisplayPort 2.1. So we can we can test it. Obviously, very good. And then USB-C. That's going to be your power. You can power a laptop like this. Take 65 watts or 100 watt. For example, if you have like a gaming laptop or something, they can often use that. Also 10 gigabyte per second. So pretty decent transfer size speeds. And then it's a power device, you know, because it has all this stuff here. So you can then plug it in for DC power. Should be pretty good, to be honest. I mean, these dock type things can be uh, of middling quality. Sometimes you pick them up and you're like, I mean, yeah, it's nice. And then like something goes weird or something. Uh, so it's nice to get one from a reliable brand that, uh, you know, BenQ has been around for a very long, very long time. And I have used many of their products over the years since some of y'all probably weren't even born. Uh, so we'll get this looked at first and then I'm actually going to arrive at my Xbox. I have an Xbox, obviously. Uh, I could do a PS5 or something, but this has a picture of an Xbox, so we're going to do it daily. Oh, it does also support PS5 because they have a PS5 picture there, but this one has an Xbox, so we're going to do that. Um, that's cool. It's a cute little guy there. Nice little packaging. Some uh, warranty card type stuff in there. And then we get our power brick, 100 watt power brick. It's not anything abnormal. Is there anything in there? Oh, here's our cables, very nice cables. 20 gigabyte per second, 100 watt. Well, I guess because you know it's got to transfer more data over USB-C potentially. So that's going to go into my computer later. And this will be the HDMI. Um, that is rated at 8K. So that is a very high end 2.1. So you can do 8K60 or 4K120. Let's put that nice little package over there. That's cute. Uh, metal, that hurt my finger. Uh, this is metal, kind of grit metal there. Uh, what does it say here? Please download and install the DisplayLink driver. So they have a driver. DisplayLink is, I think it's made by Synaptics, Synaptics, however you say that. Uh, so it's not some like random brand. Uh, that's good. Uh, that's really nice. That's the back there. Everything's labeled really nicely. So you can see all your stuff there. Right? So that you can see their USB-C. Uh, HDMI 8K60, which I don't have an 8K screen, but I do have a 4K 120. Right? Very good. And of course, you know, I can Put an Xbox, so I'll probably plug my Xbox in there. This laptop should do uh, HDMI 2.1. I also have a gaming laptop upstairs. I have many, many devices. Normally I skip steps, but I'm gonna be a good guy this time. And I'm going to download the driver, display link driver. Okay, I did a little bit of cleaning. Uh, I could stand to do more, but just a little bit of cleaning. So it's, you know, that's the device plugged in there. Everything's plugged in except my ethernet because it just doesn't reach, I'd have to, Move that over there, which is where it'll go eventually. Uh, but just for setup purposes, it's there. Xbox plugged in, laptop plugged in, keyboard is wired. Eventually, I just use a dongle style one, like you know the little uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. There it is. That'll go in there eventually. Uh, it's just not this keyboard. And then I'll have a very clean setup. That'll just be tucked in the corner. There'll be actually no wires coming, other than what's going into my laptop. That'll be pretty nice, I think. That we're gonna go Windows. What's that say? Corporate, corporate installers. Um, we are using Windows, so we're going to go Windows with it. And these are the guys, the drivers that you use for most trackpads. Not every single trackpad, but pretty much every single trackpad 
uses these guys this brand so this is you know not some like random off-brand thing for three seconds there it is oh no that's fast okay it's doing stuff here we go is that working that's working this is working uh there's that nv that uh, ssd there there's an ssd i think plugged in the back if i recall let's find out that's a sata connector on the back i have that uh sata on the back we're also going to plug in this get that out of the way there that's going to be a nice fast one too actually see look at that look at all this cool stuff i actually have more ports now i have another one in the front too this one's cool because it's got a switcher like a little kvm switch um, I don't know. Let's test them. Let's test some speeds here. Alrighty, let's test some of these. I'm assuming they're going to be fast enough. Toshiba is the fastest one because that's the USB 10 gigabyte per second. That's the front one here. It should bring, I don't know, 800 to 1000 megabytes a second or so. We shall find out. Uh, this is, this laptop is capable of doing pretty good speeds here. So yeah, there you go, 1000 megabytes a second. So that's as fast as that enclosure can possibly do. There's no point running through it. Uh, SATA connector is F. That's 500 megabytes a second. That's exactly as anticipated for a SATA drive. Uh, by the way, as you can see here, it's charging my laptop. Uh, this laptop can take a lot of lots over proprietary, but you can see here it is charging. The ThinkPad will give you a warning and say it's a weak charging state. Uh, you, I wouldn't be able to let this thing rip at full bore, like 240 watts, but it's going to be fine to keep it charged, right? It's not discharging. Yep, so that's looking good so far. Um, what else can we test? We tested all the drives, the keyboard works. Uh, oh yeah, we can switch to our Xbox. So we'll press that once. And in theory, yep, that's going to disconnect there. I guess it could be Nintendo Switch, right? Whatever you want, Hogwarts. TV display options, 120 hertz refresh rate, so it's working. It's working. Xbox does 4K 120. My monitor does 4K 120. It actually does 144, so it's just fine. Uh, 4K TV details. It's not my TV, it's, an, it's a monitor, you crazy thing. That's why it doesn't. Uh, yeah, this uh, monitor doesn't have HDR, unfortunately. Okay, so I guess that's kind of that, right? I mean, what else can we talk about here? It's pretty sweet. You basically are able to switch between devices. I mean, you don't have to use an Xbox. I am using an Xbox, but it's really cool. The fact that you can put these in here and you can switch between you know, your computer and your Xbox. You don't have to. I mean, technically you could use multiple, you could use two computers or you could use two consoles, right? You could have an Xbox plugged in and then you could have a, I don't know, a Nintendo Switch or something plugged in. You could certainly do that, it's your call. Um, I'm using it like this though, because this is how I think a lot of people would benefit from it. And what I mean by that is a lot of people would be able to, uh, you know, potentially you get a device like, you know, you get a ThinkPad or something like that over here. And maybe this ThinkPad doesn't have, uh, you know, dedicated graphics. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Let's say it doesn't have dedicated graphics. I'm not going to be ripping games on Intel, <laughs> like, you know, 13th gen UHD graphics. It's just not going to happen. So the fact that you can come in here, right, have this hooked up, get access to all of your peripherals, keyboard, mouse, extra ports there, storage devices, ethernet, all of that. You can basically have your console hooked up, your Xbox, your PS5, your Nintendo Switch, whatever, right? In this case, I'm using an Xbox. I can come in here, I can play some games, and then I gotta get back to work, put the controller down, press the button, give it a second here. This will take a sec to figure out what it's doing. There it goes. Uh, you know, you have access to mouse and keyboard, right? All this kind of stuff over here, right? The storage devices that are plugged in, Ethernet, if you need Ethernet, especially if you have bad Wi-Fi, right? And you're in your basement or something and you have really crappy Wi-Fi, you get to hook up your Ethernet. So it has the advantages of just being a standard dock, right? Like a standard plug in your laptop dock where you get access to fast ports, you know, fast USB, fast USB-C, et cetera. Everything's nice and fast. You also get access to power delivery. I'm charging my laptop over that as well. That's really cool. And then you also get the advantage of it's also basically a KVM switch. You just press that button there and it switches over to whatever's plugged in, you know, whatever console and you're cooking. Like I didn't even just immediately, right? And nowadays these consoles have quick resume, right? So it's not like you 
or you're really waiting and like booting up the silicon system. Um, most of the time when I test these type of docks, um, you know, docks in general, display docks, they're doing 4K 60. This one here does 4K 120. Most docks that I've tested, unless they're very expensive, are not able to do 4K 120, uh, especially over two devices. Uh, and most of the time they don't have access to all these ports and stuff too. And they certainly don't have a switch that you can press a button and then go into the other console. So uh, that's it. That's the device. It's sweet. Um, so thanks to BenQ for sending this over. This thing's going to be actually pretty useful for me, um, especially useful if you're going with like a lap desktop less setup where you're just going to go with mon you're just going to go with laptop, and then you're going to have your second device being like a gaming device, an actual gaming console. Which, like, let's be realistic here. If you have yourself a decent laptop like this here. You have the expanded storage on here. You don't necessarily need a desktop. One of the benefits of a desktop is that it can play games and it has lots of ports and storage. Laptop's gonna give you a lot of ports. You're gonna get extra storage. You know, this doesn't only has limited storage inside. You hook up a bunch of NVMEs and SSDs. You're cooking in terms of storage. And then rather than building myself a $3,000 gaming desktop, I just use a S Xbox. This is a used Xbox too. It cost me 260 American. I guess it would be converted, uh, 360, 350 US, 350 Canadian dollars, which is like 280 American or something like that, 260 American, and you're basically cooking. So that's the device there. It's the B Creatus by BenQ.